What's up guys, Retro Gamer Gen X here, and in today's video, we're going to be restoring this old Amiga 2000 keyboard. Now this keyboard works for the most part, like the zero key here is kind of sticky and doesn't push down and doesn't work, and a couple of these middle keys are kind of iffy when you press them, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. It also has a broken standoff here we're going to fix. So what we're going to do, um, we're going to pop all these keys off. I already put, uh, I was missing three keys as well. <laughs> so I already put those on, but we're going to be popping all these off anyway, taking everything apart, cleaning it all up, getting everything working again. And uh, as an added bonus, at the end of the video, guys, we're going to be putting that Kickstart ROM into the Amiga 2000, the one I got from the uh, Retro 8-Bit shop in the Netherlands. So stay tuned. There's going to be plenty of great Amiga stuff coming up for you guys. guys so as you guys can see here we have the actual Amiga keyboard here um, now the keys I was missing was the X the up arrow and the help button I believe those oh no 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 I'm sorry it was the X the alt and the help key is the ones that I were missing so I did go ahead and pop those back on um, and obviously they they work so no problem there but what we're going to do is go ahead and take this thing apart. So it's got six screws on the bottom here. So we're going to go ahead and take those off. And there we go, guys. Now that's the bottom of that. And there is the inside of the keyboard. And it is really, really bad. Oh my goodness. It is pretty nasty. Yeah, not quite all what's been spilled in here, but there's definitely been something spilt into the keyboard at one point. There's a piece of broken key as well. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just gonna go ahead and disconnect that first. And it has a ground on the bottom here. We're gonna disconnect that. Cables all detached, and then there we go. So, a nice little keyboard here. So now what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to start taking all these keys off right here. So in order to do that, uh, this is a little tricky because uh, you got to actually push them from the sides to pop them out. If you try from the top, you'll take like the the little contacts off and stuff. I don't know if I want to go that deep into this board or into this keyboard. Um, we may have to here. I mean, it's just, it's really bad. It's, it's got a bunch of crud and crap in there, guys. I don't know if you guys can even see that, but it is just horrible, especially like the numpad. It is the worst. But, let me go ahead and start taking off these keys here, guys. So I got all the keys off. Now if you notice the one key over here, the actual Space Invader cap did come off. So this is actually what it looks like inside. There's just a little contact in here that comes down on the Space Invader thing. There's a spring inside and that's really how it works. It's pretty simple, easy, easy thing how it works here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fix all this up. Um, I'm actually going to try to figure out a way to get this all cleaned up and make it look really nice here. Um, I'm not too sure what we're going to do here yet. So we'll keep an eye on that and see though. All right. So I'll be back with you guys. Here we got the uh, keyboard all cleaned up here. So you guys can see I got all that dirt and the grime and crap out. 
Um, these keys over here, I actually took these Space Invader like cap things off and cleaned the contacts and just the inside of it and everything as well. Uh, the rest of the keys, they weren't so bad, but I did spray contact cleaner in each and every one of them. So I think that's going to work out just fine. Um, I also cleaned up the case as well. Um, just took like a magic eraser and just kind of cleaned it and made it look real good. Turned out pretty nice. I think it looks good. No retro brighting here, guys. <laughs> so the last thing I really got to do is actually fix the standoff here that's broken. Um, it is right here. We're going to go ahead and super glue that back in so that we can actually screw the bottom of this case back together. Uh, and then lastly, I got all the keys right here in the water, guys. So they're soaking. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take magic eraser to those two and make them all clean. I went ahead and did all the keys and got these all nice and clean. Took a magic eraser to them and just made them real clean. Now. Um, another thing that I noticed here, uh, so I went ahead and fixed the standoff right here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I did go ahead and fix that. But not only was the standoff cracked, but the whole side of the case here was actually cracked too. I don't know if you guys can actually see the crack here, but I did end up like super gluing, uh, crazy gluing everything in here to make it nice and solid again. So hopefully that'll go ahead and hold for us. I don't know. Um, hopefully you guys can see that. But uh, now I'm about to put these keys back on. That's going to be a chore and a half. <laughs> Anybody that's done a keyboard restoration will know how much of a pain this is to do. Um, but really I got everything all cleaned up here. I got the keys all cleaned up. Got the, the shell all cleaned up. Got whatever needed to get fixed on here all fixed. So... We are good to go. So the next step is is basically going into fast forward and putting everything back together. So let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> basically got everything back together here um, as far as the keyboard goes and the keys so now what we got to do is get the cord back on the ground cable back on and basically get this nice clean case back together and um, hopefully everything will work okay we're gonna go ahead and put it on diagnostics and see but uh, yeah let's go ahead and get it back together We're back here. We're gonna go ahead and turn this uh, Amiga on and go to the Amiga test kit and check out to see if the keyboard is actually functioning 100%. So here we go, booting into that. And let's see, what is it? F2 to go into it. Boom. So we're gonna try out every key here and see what happens. And actually, guys, this was. Pretty easy. I mean, it was just time intensive. It took a lot of time to do this. All in all, uh, to go ahead and do this job, it took about three hours 
uh, just going through all the different keys and cleaning them and all the contacts and cleaning just everything on this thing. I mean, it was just really, really dirty. Super, super, super dirty. And the key that didn't work works just fine now. Look at that. Perfect. Can't complain. All those keys over there work. Function just, oh, man, I couldn't get any better. So I am totally happy, guys. Here we go. So good to go. Every key on the keyboard works. So with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, get this Amiga taken apart. And we'll put that new Kickstart ROM in. All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and power the Amiga up first here before we put in that Kickstart ROM. I just want to kind of show you that it is running the original 1.2 Kickstart ROM here. Let's just go ahead and let it boot up. I got uh, Amiga Test Kit in there. It's going to go ahead and boot that in. And it'll actually show right here. Hopefully it's shown up on the screen. Uh, this is actually the next day. The keyboard took so long, uh, I ended up doing this the next day. Uh, so it is daytime now. And I have a little glare on the screen. But it looks like you guys are able to see that. But as you guys can see, it says ROM Kickstart 1.2 version 3.3.180. And I'm running the original chipset NTSC 60 hertz and the original processor 68000 Motorola. So uh, that's pretty much uh, what the system is running right now. So let me go ahead and get everything set back up. We'll get this Amiga taken apart. Uh, I'm probably not going to film doing the Kickstart ROM, guys, because that's kind of boring. It's just me replacing a ROM on the board. Um, if you guys really want to see something like that, the next time I get the next Kickstart ROM, because I'm going to upgrade to probably 3.1 something or other. Um, if you guys wanted to see me install it, then I'll go ahead and do a video of installing it. But this is just going to be real quick. I'm just going to pop this thing in and just show you the difference. Now, right now, when you first boot this system up, let's go ahead and do that too. So when the system boots up... This is the screen that you get. Version 1.2 of the Kickstart ROM, as you guys can see here. So, um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, install it, and you'll see once I get it installed, it actually boots to a different version of this. And then we'll go and see what version of the Kickstart ROM it is in Amiga Test Kit. And we can also go into System Inf Info as well at that point, because this. This one does not allow you to do that. So, uh, and then we'll boot into uh, Workbench 2. Point, what is that? 2.0, 2.1, something like that as well. So, you guys will see that coming up. All right. So I got the uh, Kickstart 2.04 ROM in. So, this is going to be the first uh, power up. Let's see if this thing works. So, I don't have any anything in the disk drives. Not even in the uh, GoTech. So it should go straight to the kickstart screen. And it does. So 2.0, 3, 3, 7.1, 7.5, copyright 1991. So it looks like it did go ahead and upgrade. Let me go ahead and stick in the GoTech here. All right. I'm going to go ahead and boot into the Amiga test kit now. And it should show the ROM and everything in there. So what do we got? Yep. Kickstart ROM 2.04, So we're good to go there. Uh, still got the original chipset, which eventually I'll go ahead and get that upgraded to the enhanced chipset. Uh, that's one of my upgrades. Plus I'll be putting in a hard drive and uh, not really a hard drive, but one of those SD or CF card solutions. Uh, one of the two I'll put in there along with an accelerator card. Uh, so that's the plans coming up here, guys. So it'll be probably a couple more months before we get this thing completely upgraded. And maybe even longer than that with the customs and shipping overseas and everything. seems to take forever to get things. But uh, yeah, just wanted to show you guys that. And it uh, looks like everything's good to go. Let's go ahead and uh, boot into Workbench two point whatever uh, let's see workbench I'm just finding it on my floppies here guys okay let me go ahead and reset I love this keyboard now it works so well I wish I could actually use it as my real keyboard it works so good 
for like my PC, that would be awesome. <laughs> I just love the feel of it and the way it clicks and ticks and all that kind of stuff. So we're booting into Workbunch 2.1. It'll probably ask me if I want to install um, it on a hard drive or something like that, I'm assuming. We'll, we'll see. Because I believe that's what this will do. Yeah, this is the install disk. But it looks like it's yeah definitely booting into uh, 2.0, Workbench 2.0. So uh, we don't want to do that right now, so no. That should just put us into Workbench, which it does. Perfect, guys. So, my first time being in Workbench 2.0. Um, I did not even have this on my old Amigas back in the 90s. I never upgraded them because it was just so hard to find parts and kickstart ROMs and things like that. Uh, here where I live in the United States back then, especially once Commodore started kind of dying out. Everything went to PC and Mac here. So trying to find anything Commodore was like damn near impossible. Uh, so you can install the HD format, HD prep HD, systems, tools. We should have. Uh, I don't know what am I looking for here. Tools. Show configuration. Yep, so CPU is a 6800, normal NTSC Angus, normal Denise, so it's just a regular chipset, kickstart version, looks good. 500 megabytes of fast RAM, 500 megabytes of slow RAM, and no boards added. So, yep, looks like everything's working. I can tell you one thing, this is definitely a lot faster than it was before I put that kickstart ROM in. So just putting in a kickstart ROM, an updated kickstart ROM, made the computer a little bit faster. I could just imagine what it will do when I put in an accelerator card and more memory and everything. Oh my god, this thing will be amazing. Yeah, we're going to quit work, Mitch. Alright guys, so I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Uh, it's been a fun adventure trying to get this thing, uh, first of all, the keyboard restored, and then uh, this actually just putting in the ROM took me literally it was more time getting the Amiga off you know the monitor off the Amiga and getting it taken apart because you have to take that that uh, power supply and drive caddy out to be able to get to the Kickstarter ROM but literally it was like pop it out pop the new one in put everything back together and it works so very very easy to do very easy upgrade well anyway guys I'm gonna get out of here you guys have a great one peace out Game over, man. It's game over.